I'm going to be talking about are community-based, integrated MDA, which stands for Mass Drug Administration Programs. And I'm going to speak about it particularly in Nigeria. And here's the structure of my talk. I've already given you the introduction. Now I want to talk a little bit about a few important public health concepts that will uh, permeate some of the things I'm going to talk about. Then I'm going to talk about three neglected tropical diseases. RB, which is river blindness, LF, which is lymphatic filariasis, and schisto, which is schistosomiasis. All three are worms, all parasites. And we're going to talk then about Nigeria and talk about future challenges for 2008 and beyond. So first, let's go to concepts. And the two concepts I want to talk about are control versus elimination strategies. Sometimes they use the word eradication here. And vertical versus horizontal public health systems. So control versus elimination strategies. Control, a control strategy is one that never ends. It starts here at the dot, and it continues indefinitely into time. Now, that's sort of like a, uh, our influenza programs. Every year, we should think about getting our influenza shot. And we're not imagining a time when we're not going to be getting an influenza shot. So that's a control program. It goes on indefinitely. An elimination program is one that has a beginning and it has an end, a termination point. I guess the quintessential elimination or eradication program is smallpox, but we can also think about the effort against polio, the effort against guinea worm, et cetera. Next concept, vertical versus horizontal public health services. So a vertical idea is it's a basically a top-down, silo-driven program it's focused, it's controlled. The inputs are only dedicated to that program. If you buy a vehicle, that vehicle works on that program. It doesn't work on anything else. And the outputs are specifically related to the disease or condition that you're after. And the donors love those kinds of programs. Um, they also love eradication programs because there's a beginning and an end in what they call an exit strategy. Now, the horizontal program is more of a polyvalent program. It's a basket-type program. It's not a basket case, but it's a basket-type program in the sense that all of the money goes into one common fund, and then there's a decentralized process, usually at a district or a county level, where people think about how to spend those monies on priorities. And the idea is that those programs are more sustainable. They need to continue through, town, through time, where the vertical programs usually are more focused and often time limited. All these little arrows indicate all of the little <coughs> interventions that you can have in the process of having a polyvalent horizontal public health program. Immunizations, malaria control, river blindness control, et cetera, all working through the same structure and the same vehicle in this case, for example, would serve a number of different things being a, a sort of a pool or a basket vehicle. Now, if you get to that horizontal condition, uh, what Dr. Hans Remy at the World Health uh, Organization's Tropical Disease Program says is that integration of programs means integration of problems. And some of what I'm going to talk about today is how bringing some of these programs together results in problems and issues. Okay, so those are the concepts. Let me move on to talking in a bit of detail about the three neglected tropical parasitic diseases of the day. Onchocerciasis, or river blindness, lymphatic filariasis, or LF, and schistosomiasis, which I'll also call schisto. All three can be controlled by annual dosing of a safe and effective medication. Along with that annual dosing, it's important that there be health education so people are on board with understanding what this is all about, have buy-in and indeed participation in the activities. Now, the World Health Organization has called 13 diseases neglected tropical diseases. But gratefully, I'm not going to talk about 13. 
The ones that are circled here are the conditions which can be managed by preventive chemotherapy or what I called MDA, mass drug administration. And of these, I'm only going to speak about a few, lymphatic fluoriasis, onchocerciasis, and schistosomiasis. Now, just a plug for the University of Georgia's uh, Center for Tropical and Emerging Global Diseases. Uh, all of the lists here that are have an asterisk next to them are neglected tropical diseases. And the ones that I've underlined, schisto and lymphatic fluoriasis, that are work done here, uh, I'm going to mention tonight. And I will also mention a little bit about malaria. Now, economists, health economists, have a way of measuring diseases so that they can compare those diseases that kill people with those diseases that maim people. Um, and the neglected tropical diseases really don't do a lot of killing. They, they cause more chronic infection, more debilitating infections. And when you use what they call, what, what the economists call DALIs, which are disability adjusted uh, lost years, you can compare mortal conditions with chronic conditions um, using this scale that I have here. And what you can see is going from the lowest to the highest, we have some real big players here. We have tuberculosis, we have malaria, diarrheal diseases, HIV AIDS, and LRI, which are pneumonias, lower respiratory infections. And you can see that if you put all the treatable neglected tropical diseases together, those that can be treated through a mass drug administration program, you can see that uh, these conditions, as far as their DALIs, rank just above malaria and just below diarrheal diseases. So these conditions are, in fact, uh, quite important in terms of people's lives and in terms of global uh, morbidity. Now let's go back to our, our concept of, uh, of control versus elimination. And in this slide, we can see that river blindness, onchocerciasis, is a control program. It goes on basically forever. Uh, lymphatic fluoriasis is an elimination program. It has an effort to treat and then reach a point where treatments will end. Schistosomiasis is a control program. Another neglected disease, trachoma, is an elimination program. And each one of these conditions has its own expert committee that looks at what they're trying to do based on the intricacies of the diseases and come up with all of these series of guidelines that seem to relate when you're talking about a vertical program but then become very difficult to integrate when you try and bring these conditions together. Let's talk about river blindness. There's an old African proverb, nearness to rivers can eat the eyes. Here's a geographic distribution of river blindness, mainly in Africa, but transplanted to the Americas by the slave trade. So there are programs both in Africa and in the Americas to battle this condition. It's transmitted by a small black fly that breeds in rapidly flowing streams. So you find a lot of black flies where the streams have rapids because the black flies need highly oxygenated water. Where you find the black flies, you find the infection. Now this gentleman is suffering from lymphatic filari uh, from onchocerciasis, river blindness. You'll see immediately that he has a lump on his forehead, and that is a nodule. Then you'll notice he's squinting and his eyes are tearing a bit. The bright light is affecting him and he's suffering from a condition that's actually coming from that nodule. If I were to take this nodule out and cut it, I would find a worm in it. This worm is called Onchocerca volvulus and it produces, it, males and females are living in this nodule, they produce smaller worms called microfilaria. And you might be able to make out this microfilaria under the microscope here. The microfilaria uh, is what's picked up by the black fly, you can see here in this cartoon. And it also gets up, gets into the eyes. You see little dots here in this person's cornea. And that's an inflammatory reaction around the microfilaria that have gotten into the eye and are causing um, uh, problems. Now, I don't know if you can make this out, but over here, uh, the, we're, we're using a blade to take a little piece of skin out of this person's arm. That is placed on a microscopic slide in some fluid and from that skin will emerge these little worms. 
Here you can see one microfilaria, here you can see many. The more 